Blog Talk Radio. I will guide you through this crazy waters of sports. I am your ship captain, Tom Marcus, El Presidente. So glad to have you along because today is the day. We've been talking about it, but today is the day. The annual Balance NFL preview coming your way the 2019 season on deck. I tell you what, though, we had some really big news happening over the last few uh, uh, 48 hours in the IndyCar world. McLaren is going to be joining IndyCar for a full time season in 2020. Dumping Honda, picking up Chevy in a partnership with Schmidt Motorsports and Arrow. We're going to break that down here in just a few moments as soon as we get connected with Matthew Embry, our official IndyCar contributor uh, from up at WSBT in South Bend. Also, Kyle Courtney, super Steelers fan. We'll be talking about the Steelers. Yeah, why, why, why don't we just go ahead and throw in some more Antonio Brown uh, talk, some A.B. talk, even though he's not uh, with the Steelers anymore. This is good. This is going to get good with, with that. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Out of Jim and Ann, Super Browns fan talks with us about uh, his Baker Mayfield and squad. And then coming up at 2 o'clock, we've got something awesome. We got Ed Kratz, our official NFL contributor, beat writer for the Philadelphia Eagles. Calling us from the practice field in Philadelphia Eagles uh, practice camp. Going to be talking about not only the the, the Eagles, but just uh, opening preseason games across the board. And we welcome back also Rick Riggin, uh, who will be doing our college football analyst. Of course, Rick's been a part of the show for a long time. Most of you know him if you've listened to this show at all. So he'll be back, and we'll be talking – Football with him, of course, college football, a little peeking into Notre Dame action. We'll talk with Matthew a little bit about that. And Mo from the BS Sports Show joins us as well to cap off the 2019 NFL preview. My name is Tom Marquis, El Presidente, 917 is our digits. Stand by. It's about to get good. Tonight. The Air National Guard is a reserve component of the United States Air Force and serves alongside active duty Air Force members in times of a national crisis. In addition, the Air Guard serves the state and local community in a wide range of capacities. The reason people join the Air Guard is as diverse as our members and includes such reasons as a deep desire to serve their country, money for college, travel, new job skills, and the pride that goes along with belonging to the greatest military organization in the world. 
I joined because I felt a calling to serve my country, but I didn't want to be far away from my family, so the Indiana Air National Guard was a perfect fit for me. With over 95 different career opportunities to choose from and 100% paid college tuition to any state-funded college, why not give us a call? Call 1-800-841-3103 or visit online at goang.com to find out more. Again, that's 1-800-841-3103. The Air National Guard, guarding America, defending freedom. It's double trouble, double the fun. At African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio, see the largest antelope on Earth, the giant eland, and the ugliest creature on Earth, the African warthog. There's so much to see and do, including the Midwest's only drive through safari. Feed the animals. See live educational shows. Feel the excitement. Have your picture taken with a python or cockatoo. Feel the adventure. Shop the Simba Lodge gift shop with items available from around the globe. Visit the snack bar or picnic facilities. Enjoy a pony or camel ride. Or cheer your favorite porker on to victory in the famous pork chop down. Bring your family to see the rare and exotic animals at African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio. Just take Route 2 to the Route 53 North exit and follow the sign. Only 17 miles west of Cedar Point via Route 6. Open every day, rain or shine. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you can save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your mood. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be hard. Like early 90s heavy metal hard. I'm yelling and screaming and I'm loud. Roar. Geico makes it easy. You can review and update your policy or report a claim on Geico.com or the Geico mobile app. Because shouldn't we all have a little less stress in our lives? I'm not even upset about it. Time to kick things off. My name is Saul Mark with Dale Presidente. Also joining us is Matthew Embry, WSBT up in South Bend. Matthew, I tell you what, over the last forty-eight uh, over the last forty-eight hours, we've had some breaking news. That's right. Breaking news. Matthew Embry, our official IndyCar contributor, is going to help us break that down. We we kind of made a little teaser intro to it in, in the opening dialogue, but McLaren dumps uh, uh, dumps Honda, picks up Chevy and Schmidt Motorsports. Pick it, take it, take it from there, Matthew. What say you? Let's let's hope, let's hope for the sake of God that IndyCar has not made the worst mistake ever by allowing this to happen. What are your thoughts? I don't know why it's a mistake. I mean, the parents is trying to save face here. I mean, they tried to do it all on their own this past month, the uh, past month, Indy 500, that blew up in their face. Give them credit for, and give Sam Schmidt credit for giving them a second chance here. Uh, Zach Brown, I think this is a serious commitment that he's making here. And uh, you can't help but think this is not only going to help uh, whoever the driver's going to be. Obviously, the big name that's being dropped right now is Colton Herta. Uh, but uh, I think it's going to be a big boost to whatever the makeup of the team is for next year. Matthew, I don't know if you're 
I don't know if you're I don't know if you're in a cave or if you're on the uh, on the space station out in outer space, but you sound like Darth Vader. Can you adjust your phone just a little bit so we can understand you a little bit better? Can you hear us? Uh, I can't go at uh, extremely high levels. Okay, we got you now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you. Go right ahead, sir. This signing is going to help, I think, uh, James Hinchcliffe. Uh, If Marcus Erickson uh, is encouraged to stay for at least another year in IndyCar, I mean, there's rumors that he is looking again at possibly going back to Europe, whether it be sports car or possibly an outside shot of F1 ride again. And then, obviously, uh, Robert Wicked's if and when he's ready to come back. And then, of course, uh, whoever McLaren brings in, and it looks like the answer right now is uh, Colton Herta. Uh, I think right now the best thing, I think, for Colton Herta would be to get out of the Harding-Steinbrenner situation because Harding has not been uh, nice to some of their drivers in the past. I mean, they said that Gabby Sowers was under contract. They gave him the boot. They said that Pato Award was under contract. They gave him the boot. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good things about Harding, but I think the way they've handled drivers on the contract over the last uh, 12 months uh, just doesn't look all that great. And I think Colton Hurd is looking for an out. I think the McLaren situation would give him that chance to get an out and to uh, find, you know, a greener pasture. And I think uh, with the way Smith uh, has had their moments at Indianapolis, I think this gives uh, Colton Hurd a much better chance to be competitive at Indy as opposed to staying with Harding Steinbrenner. You know, that's certainly one of the names that I know have been tossed around in and would be a good good fit uh, there. Uh, of course, it's still, we, we don't know. Funny season's coming up, so we'll we'll see how that, that plays out. But let's talk a little bit about you, – you did you, – you kind of nailed it on the head. McLaren's trying to save face. And I tell you what, they lost one of the biggest names they had, obviously, Fernando Alonso. Uh, and what an opportunity that would have been, fast forward – if they would have been able to uh, keep things together and keep Fernando with him and bring him, I mean, that would be the biggest news in the world next to the, the man landing on the moon. Uh, if, if they would have been able to keep that together. Uh, so how big of a, of a hit was Fernando leaving them? Of course, now they're going, they're teaming up with Chevy, which is a, you know, doing very, very well, obviously, as, as we see in the in, in Team Penske there. Uh, but w- what are your thoughts? What do you, if you're Fernando Alonso and you're seeing McLaren going full-time 2020 uh, season with IndyCar and, and couldn't get things worked out with him, what are your thoughts? Well, I don't think it had anything to do with Alonso anyway, because Alonso made it clear that he didn't want to do his full schedule anyway. I think he was just focusing on Indy, which he could still do whether that's the car. Uh, so I don't think it had anything to do with Alonzo here, per se. I think uh, it was just the interest for him. I think he likes to dibble and dabble, you know, try the 25 to Lamar, and maybe a few other things down the road. I, I don't think the full-time run was ever on his uh, docket of interest, and that's why I think you're seeing Colton Hurd's name being floated around instead of Alonzo. But it wouldn't surprise me if Alonzo does come back next year and gives Indy another go uh, to save face for himself as well. Well, yeah, certainly he would like to have a better uh, appearance at the Indianapolis 500 uh, next time than he did last year. Obviously, it's a uh, rookie year, if you will. Not his rookie year, but his rookie year as Indianapolis 500 driver was, was, was okay. And certainly the attention that it brought to the sport uh, when, when, he, when he came and did, even did testing, I mean, it was, it, was, it was huge news. Well, we've got just a few races left. Are we ready to crown uh, Joseph Newgarden our champion? You know me, I'm still not convinced, especially even though, yeah, the lead is growing, but you still got Alexander Rossi back there. And, you know, Ross is going to be trying his darndest to try to break into that lead. And uh, even though, yes, uh, you have a lot of tracks, I think, are advantage Penske left on the schedule, including Pocono coming up and then next week, and then, uh, you know, Gateway. But I think still uh, Rossi has to be looked at as a contender for the championship at this point, uh, unless he has a very bad goal of it the next couple rounds. 
What we think about Simon Padjian? It was fun to watch him do his uh, uh, tour de France, if you will, uh, and, and just some of the pictures that he posted on Instagram and Twitter was really uh, kind of cool uh, in in his uh, fire suit and helmet and uh, uh, <laughs> bathrobe. We probably saw all those pictures. Looks like he's having fun. 